Uh, Pennsylvania is the second largest gas producer in the United States. Now, you, many of you have heard me say this before. We certainly do not act like it. If we're the second largest gas producer in the United States, we are one of the largest gas producers in the world. If you stop and think about gas industry on a daily basis, how does it affect us? It affects it, you know, with our heat, clothing, electricity, uh, you know, our cell phones, our computers, everything that we use, uh, medicine, uh, fertilizer, cooking, transportation, gasoline, chemicals, all these things. And as, if the economy is shut down, there's no demand for it and it get, backs it right back up into the natural gas. We can't get gas to New England where we need to. And the reason is uh, uh, mainly we can't get a pipeline through, through New York. Uh, unfortunately, then where New England and New York get gas is uh, they uh, buy it from, from Europe, or mainly Russia. Uh, the New York DEC and New Jersey DEP rejected a Williams Pipeline application to build a new line in New York. That project alone would have supplied Pennsylvania natural gas to Queens, I think Brooklyn, and a part of Long Island. It's an honor to be on this on this panel. I want to thank Cabot Oil and Gas, and as well as all your colleagues in the, in the Pennsylvania energy industry for putting together today's webinar. More importantly, thank you, uh, thank you all for creating more than three hundred thousand energy sector jobs in Pennsylvania, making the United States uh, not just Pennsylvania, but the United States the number one producer of natural gas in the world, while also helping Pennsylvania uh, cut uh, CO two emissions by over thirty percent. Uh, over this last decade. As you all know on the webinar, the Royal Dutch Shell uh, Cracker Plant, Beaver County, is the most significant economic development project in Pennsylvania. With over 6,000 construction trade jobs and $6 billion in private investment, the Shell Cracker Plant is a window uh, in, into an economic future that could make Pennsylvania not only a global leader in natural gas production, but a giant uh, in manufacturing, particularly in the petrochemical industry. There are critics uh, who, who want to demonize the natural gas industry and the petrochemical industry, but I'll point those critics to an example during this pandemic of, of Braxton America plant down in Marcus Hook. Uh, the brave and talented workers at that petrochemical plant worked around the clock for a month, for a month straight, uh, to produce personal protection equipment to ensure frontline healthcare workers could do their jobs safely. They taught us a lot about the American spirit and even more about how important the petrochemical industry is to our everyday lives. We've introduced and passed House Bill 1100, a bill that would help expand the petrochemical industry here in Pennsylvania. The House Bill 1100 is known as the Energy and Fertilizer Manufacturing Tax Credit. It would create a tax incentive to a company willing to invest up front $450 million, create 800 new construction trade jobs, pay prevailing wages, and use Pennsylvania natural gas to produce a Pennsylvania manufactured project. As I mentioned, House Bill 1100 is modeled off of the Shell tax credit and its unique design. Unique design means no state funds. Let me say that again. No state funds are needed up front. This is designed as a 20% reduction on a company's qualified tax liabilities only after only after a plant is built, workers are paid, and a product is manufactured and sold. Think about the economic supply chain over the anticipated four-year construction phase of a dry gas fertilizer plant. The wages and tax revenue over that time, according to the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, would exceed $800 million. That's nearly a billion dollars in direct economic stimulus over a four-year period of time before a single dime in tax credits would be applied to the company's back then back end tax liabilities. With Pennsylvania's budget looking at a four billion dollar shortfall, House Bill 1100 is perfectly timed to unleash the economic potential of the petrochemical industry in the dry gas play at no upfront cost to the state budget. As one potential developer, Ellis Energy, that is looking at building a half a billion dollar plant in northeastern Pennsylvania, he put it very clearly. If House Bill 1100 is not on the table, that fertilizer plant will not be built in Pennsylvania. And those jobs will go to Ohio and West Virginia. It's that simple. We're either in the game 
or we're not. We either compete for the future of the petrochemical industry in Pennsylvania or we turn our backs on the Pennsylvania unions work, turn our backs on the natural gas industry here in Pennsylvania that are looking for downstream opportunities to rebuild Pennsylvania's manufacturing sector, or we watch thousands of jobs and economic prosperity migrate to other states at a time when Pennsylvanians are desperate, desperate to rebuild our economy. And so for the last month, month and a half, the chamber, along with a number of our local chamber partners, and I know a number are on the phone here today, along with a number of statewide organizations, business organizations, including Hospital Association and the Pennsylvania Medical Society, because we want to, as we bring this, this initiative, PA, back, we want to make sure that we do it in a safe, healthy manner. It's critical for all those who are involved to do that. And it's to focus on those things that we need to do that get Pennsylvania back where we want it, back into some semblance of economic prosperity. Shell was pretty clear. When we put this in, Shell said when they opened, had we not gotten this credit, and as you know, it comes after billions of dollars have been put into the ground. Had we not gotten this credit, the jobs would have gone to West Virginia or Ohio or somewhere else. And for those who have seen that facility, it's absolutely incredible what it's doing for that economy, for the trades in those areas, absolutely incredible what is happening out there. The same could happen in Northeast PA. If they're not making money in Pennsylvania for whatever reason it is, because they're taxed too high, or the permitting issues are there, or they can't do it, they will go somewhere else. There are plenty of opportunities for investment, not only in this country, but internationally. And particularly now, coming out of this, we need to make sure that as we are bringing ourselves back, we do not put additional hurdles, barriers, to implementing more investment in this Commonwealth. Without natural gas and oil, there are no PPEs. It doesn't happen. And our friends at Pioga, and we had talked about this a little bit before, had an interesting pictorial. If you take the typical emergency room in a hospital, there are more than 90 items in that emergency room that are only made possible because of oil and natural gas. Things like EKG leads, IV pumps and power cords, laminated charts, all kinds of medical plastics, thermometers, stethoscope, bandages, parts for syringes, innovation blades, crutches, you name it. This comes about because we have an industry that delivers benefits for the Commonwealth and its citizens, delivers jobs for the Commonwealth and its citizens, and delivers tax revenue for the Commonwealth and its citizens so that we can fund the things that we all know that we want. I think folks have to understand this conversation around natural gas is, is, is not in a vacuum. If, if the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anything, it's taught us about the global supply chain, whether that's for PPE, where 80% of PPE manufactured in China. Uh, we're talking about fertilizer plants in, in, in House Bill 1100 and in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Majority of, of fertilizer is produced in China and Russia. Uh, uh, Russia is the other major natural gas player in the world. Uh, and so do we want to compete globally? Do we want to bring manufacturing back in a big way in Pennsylvania? You need to do that with affordable uh, natural gas. And for those of us in northeastern Pennsylvania, where we're just at the foothill of, of the natural gas uh, well pad, uh, and we have the infrastructure, whether it's highway infrastructure, 8081 corridor, or, or the rail infrastructure with connections to all the major uh, railroads in the country, getting uh, uh, that fertilizer to the, to, to the, mid, uh, to the Midwest, uh, to our farmers in the Midwest. We are perfectly situated from a logistics standpoint and from the standpoint of having the feedstock. Uh, what is going to increase the cost of manufacturing? Transportation of that natural gas through a pipeline to Ohio, West Virginia, Louisiana, or Texas. We could reduce those costs by doing it here in Pennsylvania, doing it in Northeastern Pennsylvania, using uh, the best gas in the world uh, in, uh, from Bradford and Susquehanna County, uh, getting that, uh, that pure dry gas from Gene Yaw and getting it into manufacturing facilities in Luzerne and Carbon County. But in Senator Yaw's district, it's dry natural gas. It's pipeline quality. So again, Senator, uh, Yaw, you've seen electric generation likewise take off, which again goes towards if you're going to have economic development and manufacturing, you need a workforce and you need energy. And that energy could be natural gas for a product or it could be electricity. 
We, we have two major uh, electric generation facilities, and then there are numerous uh, smaller ones, I think like uh, 25 kW or something like that uh, out, out there throughout the district. The product is here. We need a market for it. Uh, I mean, and that goes on to build, rebuilding Pennsylvania's economy. We have a product that we can sell, and it's going to be needed. Uh, how do we get it somewhere? Uh, the, you know, the pipeline infrastructure is a huge issue, uh, but that's also one of the reasons why House Bill, or yeah, Senate Bill 1100, uh, Senator Udichek's bill was so important because, okay, if we can't sell it, then let's, we'll, we'll create a market right here in Pennsylvania to do it and provide jobs. You know, I think back, uh, Gene, and that's correct. Uh, The developers are very clear. Uh, These incentives have to be uh, on the table for them to invest these enormous sums of money. I mean, we're talking about a half a billion dollars to start uh, the creation of 800 uh, jobs and and a payroll. We did the math on the prevailing wage, talking about a payroll of 85 to 90 million dollars a year, putting Pennsylvania construction trade workers to work. Uh, uh, the, the economic potential here is, is limitless. Pennsylvania natural gas has changed the game, and we have the opportunity to be a net exporter of energy, and we have an opportunity because of the logistics, because of the regions that we have in northeastern Pennsylvania or southwestern Pennsylvania, to be a leader in manufacturing again in the petrochemical industry that is now critical uh, to our healthcare industry uh, and, and critical certainly uh, to our, our supply chain, whether it's uh, food manufacturing and farming uh, or, or the healthcare industry. Um, in fact, we do make a lot of personal protective equipment in this country and a lot of other medical equipment, but a lot of it does come from overseas. And regardless of how much we make, there will be, I believe, a dialogue at the federal level about how we re, what I'll call reshore, bring some of the pharmaceutical manufacturing, some of the other medical equipment manufacturing back. So if it's going to move, our goal as a country and as a commonwealth is figure out how we get our share of that. If it simply leaves China and goes to another country, we've not succeeded. It's become a strategic issue now. We can't do both. Many of these facilities that we're talking about in House Bill 1100, which, George, we believe we're going to stay on the course of a, of a veto override. We're certainly always open to the idea of compromise and conversation. But we need to create jobs in Pennsylvania. When we're looking at a $4 billion shortfall, we don't have a lot of resources to incentivize economic development. So to have a vehicle in House Bill 1100, to have that vehicle where there will be no dollars, and that's been the misinformation on the opponents, that this is some kind of a giveaway to the natural gas industry. Investing a half a billion dollars a plant, putting together a payroll close to $100 million a year, That's not a giveaway. Think of all the tax revenue, both local and state, that are generated from the construction of these facilities. We believe in the end, it's a net positive gain for the taxpayers of Pennsylvania. So we're going to go forward with a veto override. If the administration wants to come to the table and will sign on to uh, having this be put into the tax code, we'll certainly entertain that conversation. But I can tell you, the building trades remain 1,000% in support. Our economic partners, our industry partners remain 1,000% uh, percent involved. Republicans, Democrats, and independents staying united uh, on House Bill 1100. We're going to continue to push to get it done, to make it one incentive in the toolbox so that economic development professionals like Gene Barr can attract companies uh, to, uh, to northeastern Pennsylvania. You need energy. We have energy. And with energy comes an economy. And then when you get an economy, you can afford to deal with the environment.